We're a large three form entry junior school. All the classes are over 30. We have a very high, in fact probably the highest in the local authority of children with English as a second language, at over 90%. Um, and we have diverse languages and cultures and we're set in a, an urban area um, just by Heath Road. The school had been successful but our intake has changed enormously and the same approaches and the same context for learning that we provided were no longer relevant. We spent quite a considerable amount of time building the capacity to change, which was to develop staff's ability to, to look at their own practice and, and to look outside. And then we started on a programme of transformation, if you like, looking at the curriculum, expanding on pupil voice because we wanted to know from the children what they were interested in and what motivated them. And that provided us with a, a starting point. We were learning as staff alongside the children. So there needed to be a, a more professional dialogue going on about learning in our school. Learning was central, not the teaching. We're already in the second decade of, of the third millennium and there have been massive changes. You think about the digitisation of society uh, and that means that children are, uh, are doing things very different outside of school and at home. And we as a school want to try and engage with that and, and see what learning we can get out of it and also enable those children to use those skills really productively um, now and when they move on. We think it's really important that children become confident, self-directed learners. So we've introduced several innovative schemes in the past few years, including building learning power and the big right. And we've also created our own programme to promote learning between the age groups uh, via digital leaders? Well the primary idea behind building learning power is that intelligence is not fixed in the same way as you can work your muscles to become fitter and healthier, you can also use your learning muscles to become more intelligent and to become a better learner. The impact has been that children have much more ownership for, of their own learning and they are, as a result, they're more proud of what they're achieving. They're more able to talk about what their targets are, what their next steps will be. They're more able to talk about how they learn. The Big Right is a literacy initiative that the lowest school in particular have taken on where we use vocabulary, connectives, openers and punctuation to up-level the children's sentences. During the Big Right we dim the lights so we can use fairy lights or candles and we use relaxing music in the background so that we're just allowed to write in a very relaxed atmosphere. Before the Big Write, I spoke to the children about their attitudes towards writing. Um, I recorded their levels as well. And I found that, generally, they weren't too keen on writing. It was just something part the, which was part of the curriculum that they had to do. Um, and I asked them the same questions again after a few sessions of the Big Write. And I found that their attitudes were much more positive. I also found that the attainment levels had increased significantly. Technology has really helped us to share our writing. We've used our blog, email, primary pad for live writing, iPod Touches, and it's really helped us publish our writing to get some really good feedback. You can have an iPad sitting right in front of you on the table, and you can just pick it up and start researching whatever you need to learn. Technology has also helped me to go on the internet more. I used to just play games and like chat to my friends, but now what I do is I go in my maths, I study more, and I'm, I'm trying to persuade my dad to um, get me a blog. <laughs> Blogs are really fun, and my maths and I am learning too. We introduced the digital leaders this year um, to give the year fives responsibility for teaching other children to learn. Um, so they're budded up with a year three child, and they go independently on their own at lunch times, and they help them to learn the basic skills of ICT. And year fives absolutely love it. They are so pleased to be like teachers. We've already noticed that the year three skills are far better than they were when they arrived because they were initially they were quite low. 
we transformed or re-engineered our curriculum so it was a, a cross-curricular approach that pulled in more meaningful context for the children. We've moved from a place where we've sort of almost lectured the children and it's been an awful lot of teacher talk to a more inquiry based style of learning where the children are more encouraged to become more curious and they go and they find things out for themselves. I think as a school the ethos is to look far beyond these courses and training programmes and um, it's more supportive and we joined in a partnership with a local secondary school to become a teaching school so developing the, the teaching of not only our colleagues and our staff but the colleagues of other schools schools sort of in the local area. Part of that involvement was to host two programmes called the OTP, which is the Outstanding Teacher Programme, and the ITP, which is the Improving Teacher Programme, both of which are facilitator-led programmes, um, but look at sharing experiences um, and from that developing their own, their own teaching. So we have a wealth of information about our pupils before they come to us. Once we have our children, we give them time to settle down and then we look at their progress. We've recently started up a nurture group due to the way the children are nowadays with parents busy working, do not have enough time to spend with them. Children who are making progress but could do even better and this is proving to be highly successful in motivating the pupils, moving them forward, not necessarily in their academic abilities, but their social skills and their learning and their wanting to come to school. We've recently started to collaborate with a local teacher training college by linking their undergraduates with our children through their class blogs. So children publish something on their blog and the undergraduate will provide some personalised uh, feedback uh, in a comment form. This has inspired lots of children to write regularly at home and at school and has encouraged them to try to produce their best work. We've been developing obviously a school website but also each class now has their own blog and this really is a window into the classroom for, for parents and we're really aware at this school that many of our parents speak a different language at home with their children. They may have had very different educational experiences yeah. to the ones that we're offering our children and so they're going to get a much better idea of how we learn in, in Springbok. We also have drop-in sessions, we have lots of our traditional communication with parents and that really is helping us to bring down those barriers to, to home. One thing I was really impressed is the blogging. Um, this is the first time I've actually seen a blog itself. It just amazes me in terms of the quality of work actually produced and uh, obviously we are stepping into the 21st century and using all the resources uh, available. What I've seen is more of an appetite from my children to use the technology we have in the home. So they're more interested in understanding, okay, well, how does a PC work? How does uh, the communication through email work? How does uh, Twitter work? How can I connect and follow uh, other school children, classmates, uh, understand you know, what the teachers are saying to me through that media? And to me that's great because those are things that I'm embracing on a day-to-day -day basis through my business work and life and my children are challenging me and showing me new ways of how to use that kind of media. So I think that's fantastic. Through technology, we are now linking with schools uh, around the world. At the moment, we're getting lots of comments uh, on class blogs from a school in New Zealand. What the children are seeing is that their work is really valued, so the children become more engaged and they put more into it, and they see the purpose of it. And that's a really powerful tool if we want children to enjoy writing and also improve it. It's transformed what we, you know, what we do here. The place looks completely different. In three, year, three, four years, you're going to these classrooms. They're vibrant. The children are more actively engaged. They're real participants in their learning, directing the questions, what they want to know. Uh, they're taking their learning outside school and coming back with things and learning things that we never hoped. Then you you know we would teach them and the sorts of conversations that you have with children about learning now is is in far more depth. We're not phased by change. People are quite happy about taking on new ideas and new approaches and trying things. We don't have the Springwell way. We have the evolving Springwell way.